Okay, everybody. Hey, uh, I don't know if this is going to be a happy homebrew Wednesday, but this is going to be a brew day video for you guys. It's come to my attention that I haven't really done one of those in a while. So today we're going to do a Vic Secret uh, Smash Beer, Smash IPA. Uh, this is a 21% alpha acid hop. Uh, so let's get right into it. I've got water heating up and we're actually about to mash in. So let's, let's jump right into it. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, our water's a little hot right now. It's at about 173 degrees. We're looking to mash in at 146. Uh, it's a little cooler outside, so I like to go 18 to 20 degrees above. Uh, so that would put us at, what, 166? I overshot it. I was getting the camera set up. My bad. <laughs> Let's mash in. Okay, so a little bit about my system here. I built my own little copper dip tube that goes in there. You open this valve, water flows, open this valve, water flows, and we are doing what's called underletting. For those of you who are experienced brewers, you know what that is. But underletting is the process of bringing the water in under the grain bed and slowly rising it up. So actually, we're gonna turn down the speed, the outlet speed and then that'll help us not create a vortex uh, on that dip tube um, so it's not sucking in air making the pump cavitate. Okay, so the grain bed has risen quite a bit. So let's go ahead and start stirring this a little bit. And there we go, we're mashed in pretty much. Hi there. So I had mentioned that I uh, want to have a mash temperature of 146. Uh, we are at 151 right now. All right, so we are just going to try to stir this out, try to stir some of the heat out of this. I may add some cold water um, so that this process doesn't take forever. So we're just going to add a little bit of cold water here. I'm, I'm running it through the filter still. Some people will add cold water later on and not think that this is not their filter, they treated water. Uh, and they'll grab something off the tap. We're grabbing this out of the filter. Okay, so just a little bit. Let's see how much this needs. I don't want to change my water to grist, you know, ratio. So really all I grabbed was maybe a half a gallon, was maybe two quarts of water. And, you know, over the this total grist of about 15 to 16 pounds, you know, the total grain bill, um, adding two quarts of water, full two quarts, is not a huge deal. It doesn't change the ratio a whole lot. Oh, that might have nailed it. 145.9. Come on, baby. 146.1, 147. All right, so this is stirred up. It's a little more soupy than I would like. I like it to be a little bit more like oatmeal, but that's okay. And then we've got the false lid. That's going to help keep our heat in along with the regular lid nice and tight and we're gonna start the timer and it's gonna be for one hour get rid of the minutes come on there we go and start one hour mash so this is a one step you know infusion uh, you know mash here um, temperature we're gonna call it 147 we're gonna change that on the sheet um, oh <laughs> I thought it was 146 in my mind I was thinking 146 uh, the, the recipe actually calls for 148, so whatever, that's fine. We're going to call it 147. We had pockets of 148 and one, uh, 149, but that's okay. So I know some of you experienced brewers know what that is, but single malt and single hop um, beers, as it was explained to me. So uh, I threw in a little flaked oats. It doesn't uh, add much in the way of flavor at all, really. It's just a creamy, it's a texture thing, um, and it doesn't really... Uh, do much in terms of color or appearance. So this is gonna be a super super pale beer super um, Light, you know, like a golden straw yellow color and then some rice holes uh, rice holes are Huge for me now since I'm using the pump um, Helps me to filter the water through when I'm lottering um, and, and getting that wort nice and clear so the rest of the beer kind of looks like this um, at 60 minutes once the boil starts we're gonna throw in some calcium chloride that's just the way I do it. I know a lot of people will treat all of their water before uh, they even have it measured out for mash and, and sparging water. Um, 
I don't know. I've always just thrown it in the boil and it's been working for me. Uh, Irish moss at 15 minutes along with uh, yeast nutrient at 15 minutes. Uh, two teaspoons of Irish moss, one teaspoon of yeast nutrient. Uh, along with one ounce of the Vic Secret, 21% alpha acid. We are not going to do our first hop drop until 15 minutes. Um, that 15 to 20 minute range is my flavor range for hops. Um, at least what's always worked for me. I usually do about a 20 minute drop. Uh, but I decided to go 15 today. And then uh, we're going to run the timer out till we get to zero minutes. We're going to kill the flame. We're going to throw in three ounces of Vic Secret. Um, and we're going to recirculate uh, the, wort, the, the, the beer. Um, and it's going to be what's called a whirlpool or a hop stand. And uh, we're just going to whirlpool uh, down to 180 and just keep whirlpooling. We're going to stop the, uh, the, the wort from chilling. And um, just gonna whirlpool for 30 minutes. <laughs> and then once that's complete, uh, we'll start the chiller up again, get it down to fermentation, you know, pitching temperatures, um, get it down to about 75, 70 degrees, pitch the yeast and call it a day. So let's, let's get right into it guys. <laughs> Actually, it's uh, one o'clock on the weekend. So I need a beer, let's get one. Okay, so now that we've got like 15 minutes left, I'm just gonna go ahead and get ahead of the curve a little bit. And I'm gonna get some water going into the hot liquor tank. Uh, so we can get the sparge, uh, sparge water ready. <laughs> I run the garden hose all the way around and then through my rodent proofing. Do a quick disconnect and then I have a little valve here. Water's already on. And there we go. So as you can maybe see, uh, batch sparge uh, with four and a quarter gallons. They put 4.07. I like to round up to the nearest quarter gallon. So four and a quarter gallons. 168 degree water. So simply put, the way I measure water is this little sight glass. So the bottom two and a half gallons are burned. <laughs> here's the three gallon mark. Here's four gallon. Uh, and what I say, four and a quarter. So here's four and a half, here's four. So right in between there, I'll see the water come up. Okay, the mash is done. Um, let's go ahead and set up uh, for Vorloffing. And we're gonna do some recirculation to try to clear out the wort. Okay, so this is a little high. This is full blast. I control it with this valve right here. And so we're gonna trickle it down a little bit at a time. We're gonna go nice and slow in the beginning because we don't want to create so much suction that we create either a hole in our grain bed or compact it so hard that we get a stuck mash. Um, so we're just gonna go at this pace for a while. Okay, so the way I have this set up is just your standard uh, uh, what is this half inch uh, ball valve um, cam lock fitting that goes to the inlet of the pump comes to the outlet of the pump this is all pretty basic uh, and then you have a cam lock hooked up to uh, another you know male cam lock fitting which has a copper threaded piece with a uh, little bit of a copper um, tail let's call it where I can uh, slide a piece of high heat hose with a worm clamp and then it goes to here inside of this this is a, just a little vinyl PVC tubing or whatever it is. Inside of it, though, is a stainless steel tube. So the hot wort is actually going into stainless steel. Um, these act as spacers because there's a hole in this PVC. So these act as spacers um, so we can get this rise in this little stem here um, so we can come up and over. So this acts as a spacer, really. I worm clamp it on here with a high heat hose. It goes straight down the stainless, and then it comes down here out through... Um, to this little spray wort aerator and then uh, that uh, disperses it so it doesn't drill a hole in the grain bed and um, it goes over and over again and we're gonna let this run for probably a solid 10 minutes um, until this gets a little cleared up um, and then we're good to go okay we're gonna get the uh, the sparge water starting to heat up and then we're gonna run this off into the main boil kettle, and then we're gonna run new water on top of the grains and sparge it out. We're gonna batch sparge. Although I could probably fly sparge, I'm gonna batch sparge. 
that's how I've always done it. And it works for me. So that's what we're gonna do uh, today and I'll show you that. Okay, so the word's running clear. We're gonna switch it from here to here now. And then we're gonna dump this in here so that our wort is going through this basket. So it'll kind of strain out any remnant grains that might get in there before it goes into the pot. Okay, so we're set up now. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the valve back on and we're gonna start running wort. We can turn that up a little bit. We're gonna start running wort into the kettle. Most important thing is let's make sure our valves are closed. <laughs> and that is a beautiful yellow color. We got a little sunlight up here, but it's not reflecting in here. Um, but either way, that is a beautiful pale yellow, straw yellow color. Okay, so we're going to see that the grains are actually getting caught in here a little bit. Before it steams up, you can see some grains down there. This is an effective tool uh, for me so that the grains don't float around in there once we hit up to the boiling temperature because I don't want any of those uh, extracted tannic you know, flavors from uh, you know, grains or grain husks. Okay, we're running the water out. Out of here. Let's slow it down a little bit though. There we go. Okay, so this is it. Just simple stirring, getting everything loose again. Some of you guys may disagree with this method. Um, some people think that we're uh, shaking things up and releasing tannic flavors uh, and disrupting things. I, I have not had a problem with this, um, but some people have that theory. I'm not saying they're wrong, not saying I'm right but uh, I've, I haven't had a problem with this method. Okay, we're running pretty clear now, so we're gonna start running this off into the kettle so we can get our full volume and get this boil going because this has gone on long enough. We're gonna run this off for a little while, get a little bit more flow, and then we're gonna try to get the uh, full volume. I'll show you how we're gonna measure that. This stick, has seven and a quarter gallons marked for this kettle. <laughs> and that's how I am going to measure it. This is the 10 gallon kettle that has a uh, sight glass on it. Uh, this one does not. Maybe I'll install one someday, but for now, that's the measurement. <laughs> so we are here, we need to be here. Okay, the grain bed is drying out and our full boil volume is getting close real close so uh, we're gonna keep running this off till we get our volume and uh, it's getting pretty dry so we're almost there okie dokie here we go getting the heat going we're sitting at about 137 and we're gonna get this up to a boil I'm gonna grab a uh, sample out of here real quick for the hydrometer sorry the refractometer and uh, we're gonna wait for the boil, but uh, not bad. We got the full volume. Look how yellow that is. Mmm. And then we're gonna grab a sample. And then just a little extra. Perfect, so here's our sample right here. We're gonna let that cool down. And then we gotta empty this basket because it's got that grain at the bottom. So we're gonna rinse this out real quick. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are at a boil, so let's go ahead and add in our calcium chloride. And that will be all for the 60 minute. And let's go start the timer. Okay, refractometer. It's the uh, automated temperature control refractometer is what I use. We got the little sample here. And let's see what we see. So I don't know how clear that's gonna come through. Looks good to me on the screen, but it's gonna be pretty small. So that's gonna be about 1058. And let's go see what my pre-boil gravity was supposed to be. Okay, estimated pre-boil gravity 1061. So hey, we were a couple points short. I'm not terribly stoked on that, but we're gonna put actual was a 1058. We were supposed to have 7.25 gallons. I think we had a little more than that. It might've been 7.3, might've been 7.35. Maybe I diluted this a little bit, um, but whatever. I'm gonna take my licking and uh, just, hey, I came up three points short, whatever. No big deal. We'll make it up on the boil. And speaking of the boil, we got a nice little boil going here. 
Uh, nice and gentle. Uh, we are running the pump, circulating some hot water through it to help kind of clean it out of any sticky wart that's in there. Soaking some parts. The hot liquor tank is already clean and drying and the mash tun has been cleaned out and it's drying as well. Okay, we are at the, let's see here, 20 minute and 45 second mark, whatever, close enough. At 20 minutes, I like to get my work chiller in, so let's go ahead and do that. Got it on a quick disconnect system here on the inlet side. Boom, good to go. And now our water is ready when we're ready to do that. So now we're going to set up the uh, high heat hoses in the pump because at about 15 minutes or so, we're going to start running uh, hot work through it uh, through the pump to start, you know boil sanitizing these lines so that we're ready to go for the whirlpool once the flame goes out. All right, 15 minutes has passed us by. Let's get this going. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and just get the uh, the beer to run through the lines and we're going to start, uh, you know, boil sanitizing these hot uh, high heat lines. taking a second for it to prime, but it'll get there. There we go. Now we've got some fluid movement. Took a minute though. All right, we're done. And we'll get the, uh, the hops in here. Let's turn up the, the capacity here. All right, full capacity now. We are going to centralize this, and there's our whirlpool. Look at that, beautiful. All right, we got a decent whirlpool going. Let's start chilling, because we are, uh, well, we need to get down to 180. So let's close this valve. Let's open this all the way, and let's uh, slowly open this. Need to make sure we have no leaks. Ooh, ooh, that dropped it down. That made this whole thing move. We're gonna watch the temperature here because it's gonna drop pretty quickly. We don't want to drop it too far. Just about to hit 190, 192 right now. Okay, we've hit our 30 minutes of whirlpool. We're just about 163 degrees. Let's get the water going. Okay, well, as always, clamp saves the day. So we just wrapped a towel around here. It's gonna soak up all the liquid that's leaking and uh, it's just gonna drip <laughs> uh, down to the bottom and then we're good. So that's it for me, guys. This has been the uh, brew day. Um, ooh, let me show you something real quick. Look at all that hot matter. Ooh wee, that is a lot caught by this thing. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this has been the brew day though guys this is pretty much it i don't i mean it doesn't really matter what the uh, original gravity is i'm gonna hit my numbers uh within a couple of points i'll probably be under a little bit cheers guys see ya